Welcome back, everybody, and good morning, and welcome to everybody who's new to the channel. I haven't checked my YouTube because I've been banned for a week, but it seems like over a thousand of you searching for BL Ranch made it to my channel. So let me just say he's he's fine. He chose to take his stuff down. He's totally fine. Don't worry. Um, next thing I should mention is you got to get on BitChute. You got to get on Rumble. This is YouTube is garbage, absolute garbage, and I'm not going to be posting on YouTube after you know my next strike so get over the bit shoot and listen i know it's not very user friendly but let me tell you what i do instead of pressing the app button to open up uh youtube on my phone i just hit chrome or whatever my internet explorer is and i have three tabs open one tab is for rumble one tab is for bit shoot etc and it's actually just as user friendly as hitting the youtube app button it doesn't take any longer if you just leave these browser pages open you can just come to it in a second. It's easy. So what we're going to do today is talk about the plan. Not the plan we've all been talking about, not the 17 plan. I want to talk about the plan that we can prove is real. The plan that has been going on for the past 40 or 50 years or so. And basically the plan involves eliminating America, eliminating Christianity, eliminating patriots, eliminating God-fearing, liberty-loving Americans. We've always been the target, you guys, and you know that. And I'm going to show you in this episode, we absolutely are target number one. And with everything that happened on January 6th, that just reaffirms it. You know, they're calling us terrorists for a reason. This is not new. So where I want to start is, look at your screen. What I looked up is Soldier of Fortune magazine. Soldier of Fortune. I was born in 1992, and I have two older brothers, and all three of us were obsessed with the Army. We loved it. So Dad would take us to the Army-Navy store and stuff, and or a gun store, and we would see there would always be a stack of Soldier of Fortune magazines in a box on the floor in these types of stores, right, the Army-Navy stores, and I was obsessed with them as a kid. I collected them. I loved this magazine, and the reason I'm bringing this up is I want to describe to you what America was like before this started happening, before really the 1980s. Because a lot of these magazines, a lot of the popular issues were 70s, early 80s. What is Soldier of Fortune magazine? Well, it's exactly what its title says. It's a magazine for soldiers of fortune. <laughs> so people who make a career, make a living off being a soldier. And you guys aren't going to believe this, but if you flip to the back of an old Soldier of Fortune magazine, they have classifieds for mercenary work. For example, there would be a little classified ad in the back that said, you know, company searching for five private military contractors with their own gear. Uh, we will pay for a flight to Columbia, blah, blah, blah. And American citizens literally could go to Soldier of Fortune and sign up to be a mercenary. And I bring that up because we had this level of freedom in this country up until recently. This level of freedom where you could buy a machine gun, you could buy a bunch of gear, and you could just pick up a magazine and then travel across the world and shoot people and fight as a mercenary. And it, it was amazing. It was cool. It was the coolest magazine ever. Not only that, but you could buy weapons in the back. If You could literally buy firearms out of the back of this magazine and all sorts of other fun stuff. One of the cool things I remember is a can of spray, and you spray it on your license plate. And that way, when you go through the toll booth and it takes a picture of it, it glares out your license plate. Like, stuff like that. It was, it was an amazing magazine. And their journalist would go all over the world to different combat areas and actually do journalism. It was like what Vice News pretends to do today, right? Vice News pretends to go to combat zones, but we know that Vice is just CIA media. There's a reason that Vice is the only media company that ever gets to go to North Korea. It's because they're controlled. Soldier of Fortune was like that, but it was real. It was an amazing, amazing publication. And I don't know when it ended. I want to say the 90s, but like I said, I'm bringing this up because America was very different before the plan started. The plan being to attack Christians and attack America and destroy America. And this plan has been going on for quite some time, but we're going to focus on like the past four years. So, yeah, like I said, I bring up Soldier of Fortune because it paints a picture of what America was like before the anti-Christian, anti-patriot movement began in our government. So I guess a good place to start would be the Firearm Owners Protection Act. Um, I don't know much about this. All I know is that machine guns are no longer allowed. And I think it was in 1986. It says May 19th. 
So basically, you used to be able to import machine guns, own machine guns, buy and sell machine guns like regular guns, right? That changed in 1986. So now, basically what they did is the machine guns in our country are the only ones that are in circulation. So you cannot import new machine guns. You can build machine guns, but that requires lots of money and lots of licensing. So the machine guns we have in our country are the only machine guns in circulation. So they're fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, even for a low quality firearm. So why would they do that? Why did we go from a country that glorified the warrior to go into a country that targeted the warrior? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. 1986 is when they started attacking firearm owners. And it wasn't just that, you guys. We got to talk about the ATF, right? So for the past four years, Trump has been talking about the mainstream media, the deep state, the intelligence agencies. Has he ever mentioned the ATF? No, he hasn't. Has he ever really mentioned the IRS? No, he hasn't. And the IRS and the ATF are probably our number one enemies in the government. The ATF is an intelligence service specifically created to track gun owners, to track patriots, to track regular Americans. So let's read this real quick. Federal Firearms Law Reform. Under the Gun Control Act of 1968, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms was given wide latitude on the enforcement of regulations pertaining to holders of federal firearms licenses, FFLs. If you buy a gun, you have to buy it from an FFL. So if I buy a gun on the internet, they can't just ship it to my house. I have to go to Cabela's or a local store and find an FFL and say, hey, I'm ordering a gun. Can I get it ordered to you? And then the FFL sells you the gun. So right off the bat, the ATF was created and given wide latitude to target FFLs. That's a fantastic way of creating a database on everybody who owns guns because you don't get a gun unless you go through an FFL in most cases. Like in a state of Maine, you can do private sales between Maine residents. But for the most part, an FFL holds all of the community's information. For example, like in Massachusetts, the gun store's FFL, he's going to know where all the guns are. He's going to know everybody in that community who has a gun, right? That's how it works. Let's keep reading. Okay, FFLs enable an individual or a company to engage in a business pertaining to the manufacture or importation of firearms and ammunition, or the interstate and interstate sale of firearms. And then it says right after, allegations of abuse by ATF inspectors after passage of the act arose from the National Rifle Association and some FFL licensees. In particular, advocates claim that ATF was repeatedly inspecting FFL holders for their apparent purpose of harassment intended to drive the FFL holders out of business, as the FFL holders would constantly be having to tend to ATF inspections instead of to customers. That's literally like the first thing it says on Wikipedia, you guys. Wikipedia. Now, the Constitution is very simple, what it says about firearms. They shall never be questioned or infringed. That's what the main state constitution says. They can't even question your firearms. The other day, I was cleaning up graffiti with a rifle on my back. And the cop, he didn't even question it. He came up. He said, hey, I got the call. I'm not questioning. I'm not asking for your ID. Just say Second Amendment, and it's fine. And that's what I said. But the eight, well, I don't know where I was going with that. But the ATF, <clears throat> right here on Wikipedia, it says the ATF repeatedly inspects FFL holders to keep them tied up so they can't focus on their business, right? So going back to the late 1980s, that's really when this uh, zeitgeist changed. It changed from this. <clears throat> it changed from being able to go to the back pages of Soldier of, Soldier of Fortune and travel the world and be a mercenary. It went from glorifying the soldier to targeting the soldier. And this is what happened in the 1980s. Once we continue into the 90s and into the present time, that is when you're going to see the plan. The plan is anti-Christian. The plan is anti-American. And it's anti-white. I don't even know why they had to throw that in there in recent years, but apparently it's anti-white too. So let's talk about the Mockingbird media, and let's talk about optics and public perception. We're going to go through a list of false flags and real events that happened and what I'm going to argue is that over the past 40 years with all of these events, they've had one goal. And that one goal is to corner and persecute the patriot, the God-fearing Christian patriot. 
Because whether you're religious or not, the people that control our country are extremely religious, and they they practice a religion that's an inverted version of Christianity. So you might not be religious, you might not believe in Christianity, but it affects you. It still affects you. Look at how Wu flu affects me, right? No one can really prove it, but it's. In, I don't partake in it, I don't think about it, I don't engage in it, but it still affects my life greatly. And that's the mindset you need to have when you think about the religion of the ruling class. It does affect you. It affects every aspect of your life, whether you're religious or not. So what we're going to do is start at Ruby Ridge. Let's just read. Ruby Ridge was the site of an 11-day siege in 1992 in Boundary County, Idaho, near Naples. It began on August 21st when deputies of the United States Marshal Service initiated action to apprehend and arrest Randy Weaver under a bench warrant after his failure to appear on firearms charges. So what's a bench warrant? Bench warrant, we've looked in the 1886 dictionary before, and a bench warrant basically has to do with money. You owe money to the court, so they issue a bench warrant. What's the Latin word for bank? I believe it's bench, something like that. The reason they use the word bench is because it, back in its Latin translation, it means bank or something like that. That was a long time ago we did that. Anyway, Randy Weaver owed money on firearms charges. Given three conflicting dates for his court appearance and suspecting a conspiracy against him, Weaver refused to surrender, and members of his immediate family and family friend Kevin Harris resisted as well. The hostage rescue team of the FBI became involved as the siege developed. Now, it's important to understand this is not happening in a populated area. This is happening in the middle of nowhere. Randy Weaver was off the grid, basically, living in the mountains with his family. He was just a regular Christian dude. And yeah, you got to show up for court, but at the same time, this man is a human being with certain unalienable rights. And we're not going to get into maritime law, we're not going to get into admiralty law, but there is no reason anybody should be targeted and killed for a bench warrant. Let's read what happened. During the Marshal's service, reconnoitre of the Weaver property, six U.S. Marshals encountered Harris and Sammy Weaver, Randy's 14-year-old son, in the woods near the family cabin. A shootout took place. Deputy U.S. Marshal William Francis Deegan, Sammy Weaver, and the Weaver's dog, Stryker, all died as a result. In a subsequent siege of the Weaver residence led by the FBI, Weaver's wife, Vicky, was killed by FBI sniper fire. All casualties occurred in the first two days of the operation. The siege and standoff were ultimately resolved by civilian negotiators. Harris surrendered and was arrested on August 30th, while Weaver and his three daughters surrendered the next day. So yeah, they killed members of this guy's family all over a bench warrant. And at the time, this just looked like an unfortunate event, but as... The decades would pass, we would see that Ruby Ridge really marks the beginning of on-the-ground action against Christians, God-fearing Americans, and gun owners, and patriots, liberty lovers. Ruby Ridge really kicked off the 40 year or the 30 years or so of the plan, the plan to end America, and the plan to end Christianity, and the plan to, you know, <laughs> you know the plan. So, you know, when I started the channel, I started with 17 looking into that plan. And um, I'm not saying that's not legit. I've really stopped looking into it because there's no way to prove it. So it's really not worth my time. But what I can tell you guys is that this plan that we're going to be going over is real. This is a real documented operation that's been going on for decades. And it's super obvious. And you and I are the targets. So, Ruby Ridge. And of course, you guys probably remember Waco. Let's read a little. The Waco Siege. The Waco Siege was also known as the Waco Massacre. It was when law enforcement siege, it was a law enforcement siege of the compound that belonged to the religious sect Branch Davidians. Now they're gonna want they're gonna tell you that the Branch Davidians were all crazy fundamentalist Christians. I don't believe that one bit. I think they were just communal Christians living, trying to live off the grid and trying not to take part in the beast system that we're all forced to live in. It was carried out by the U.S. federal government, Texas state law enforcement, and the U.S. military. Between, between February 28th and April 19th, the Branch Davidians were led by David Koresh and were headquartered at Mount Carmel Center Ranch in the community of Axtell, Texas, 13 miles northeast of Waco. 
Suspecting the group of stockpiling illegal weapons, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the ATF, obtained a search warrant for the compound and arrest warrants for Koresh, as well as a select few of the group's members. So only less than 10 years before this is when the ATF was given, you know, wide-reaching powers. It's when they got rid of machine guns, right? The 1986 Firearm Owner Protection Act. Of course, it's, it's for your protection. Don't worry. And I can't recall what evidence they used. I remember watching a documentary on History Channel, and they said a mail driver took a corner too tight, and a box fell over that was labeled for the Branch Davidians, and a bunch of grenades fell out. That's their story. That's the federal government story for killing over 70 people. Let's continue. So yeah, they get warrants. The incident began when the ATF attempted to serve a search and arrest warrant on the ranch. An intense gunfight erupted, resulting in the deaths of four government agents and six Branch Davidians. Upon the ATF's entering of the property and failure to execute the search warrant, a siege lasting 51 days was initiated by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Eventually, the FBI launched an assault and initiated a tear gas attack in an attempt to force the Branch Davidians out of the ranch. Shortly thereafter, the Mount Carmel Center quickly became engulfed in flames. The fire resulted in the deaths of 76 Branch Davidians, including 25 children, two pregnant women, and David Koresh himself. Wow. So, think. Anytime you see something on the mainstream news about this, they're all lies, you guys. They're all lies. These were Christians who were supporting the Second Amendment, supporting their, their right to bear arms, who were targeted by the ATF, thus leading to the death of over 70 people, including 25 children. 25 children. Remember, the Constitution says there is nothing, There is you cannot restrict the citizens from bearing arms or forming a militia. And like I said, we're not going to go into the maritime law, but when it comes to the federal government, the real, the real truth is all these laws that the federal government passes, they do not supersede the Constitution. It's the people who don't educate themselves, who get wrapped up in this, who don't know how to respond, who don't know the truth about the laws and the land that we live in, who get wrapped up in all this and unfortunately become victims. The real truth, the real truth is that you cannot be questioned. They cannot stop you from bearing arms. This is America. Just because the federal government says, no, 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 doesn't mean they're right. It doesn't mean they're right. Nothing gives them the right to seize property from these people and kill 25 children. But this is the plan. And this was false, not false fly. This is real, but you know what I mean? This was operation number two or number three. We're in the 90s. Okay. 1993 as well, the World Trade Center bombing, right? On February 26, 1993, a bomb exploded in a parking garage at the World Trade Center in New York City. The event was the first indication for the Diplomatic Security Service, or DSS, that terrorism was evolving from a regional phenomenon outside of the United States as a transnational phenomenon. So yeah, 1993, World Trade Center was bombed. But this is where terrorism comes into the picture, right? So beginning in the 90s and throughout my whole life, terrorism has always been this invisible enemy of ours, fundamentalist terrorism. And of course, it began with Muslims. It began with Islamic fund fundamentalism. And where are we at today? We are at Christian conservative fundamentalism. We are at domestic terrorism being carried out by Christians, by liberty lovers. See how they took that? They took that and they smoothly transitioned it. It's what Alex Jones has been saying the whole time. So, what happens next? Next, we have the Oklahoma City bombing. I've done episodes on this. Um, there's endless, endless resources to find out the truth about this. James Corbett. Go look at James Corbett's old episode about this. Um, once again, a white, Christian, former military, God-fearing, liberty-loving American was responsible for this. They said he used a truck bomb to do this. I'm not going to go into the details because the video will get removed. We all know it's BS. 
On the morning of April 19, 1995, an ex-Army soldier and security guard named Timothy McVeigh parked a rented rider truck in front of the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building in downtown Oklahoma City. He was about to commit mass murder. Inside the vehicle was a powerful bomb made out of a deadly cocktail of fertilizer, diesel fuel, and other chemicals. McVeigh got out, locked the door, and headed towards his getaway car. He ignited one time to fuse, then another. At 9.02, the bomb exploded. Like I said, not going to go into the details of this, but I'll say a few things. Um, the ATF was photographed and filmed removing more bombs that from the building that didn't go off immediately after the initial bombs went off. There are photos and videos of plastic explosive being carried out of the Alfred P. Murrah building by ATF agents. Timothy McVeigh was likely sheep dipped. Why was he filmed working on an APC in a military motor pool months after he left the army? This guy, Timothy McVeigh, they, they paint him as a stupid white Christian, but he really was personal security to the commanding general of Desert Storm. So this guy was, he had dreams of becoming special forces. Apparently he failed the special forces test. And in my personal opinion, I believe he passed with flying colors. Therefore, they sheep dipped him or made it seem like he had left the military. Once again, carried out by the government, blamed on white Christians. Of course, September 11th. Here's where the two psyops parallel one another. I'm not saying 9-11 was a psyop. I'm saying that 9-11 was blamed on fundamentalist terrorists, right? Uh, from the Middle East, of course. And, of course, all the patriots fell for that. We went along with it. We had this great surge of patriotism after 9-11. But what else happened after 9-11? We had... Let me find it. Where did I put it? They passed the Patriot Act. And now, I recommend you go look at Alex Jones' original original work. You know, his stuff about Oklahoma City and his stuff about the Patriot Act. Uh, it's all great. But the Patriot Act basically stripped us of all of our rights. That's what it did. Nobody, nobody disagrees on that. Nobody disagrees on that. They used 9-11 as a form of trauma-based mind control to manipulate all of us into signing our rights away. The Patriot Act allows them to spy on all of us. It allows them to label anybody as a potential terrorist threat and therefore spy on them. I mean, we all know. We all know what this is full of. Maybe one day we can read it together. But yeah, um, basically it ushered in the security state that we're living in today. It initiated the security state. Oh, boy. And who who are their targets? This is why I recommend Alex Jones' early work, because he has this all documented in those very early documentaries. The Patriot Act, I mean, the FBI has handed out paperwork where it says patriotic Americans are the top threat when it comes to domestic terrorism. And you can deny that all you want, but just turn on the mainstream news today and they're calling you a domestic terrorist. That's why I open carry with a rifle a lot now by the way i'm thinking i'm gonna go get a big piece of wood and it's gonna say first and second amendment audit every saturday noon till whenever i haven't it's not official yet but i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna take it down to the intersection of high and congress and i'm just gonna stand there armed every saturday <laughs> i think that's what we should do so if you want to do that comment below email truemediaportland at gmail.com okay so we have 9-11, we have the Patriot Act. What do we find out a few years later with Edward Snowden? We find out that the National Security Agency has been spying on everybody all at once. So even, they just collect all the data, every phone call, every text, every Facebook message, every single thing they collect, and then they can farm that data. And let's talk about that for a little bit. So it's not like they're actively watching you and listening to you live. What they're doing is they're collecting all of your information through the internet and they are creating a profile out of you. And this is, at this point, this is likely being done with some very sophisticated computer technology, maybe even artificial intelligence. They collect all this data about you and then, this might sound a little far-fetched, but basically they can frame anybody for a crime because they know everything about your life. They know when you left the house. They know where you went. They know what time you were driving, what time you're doing this, what time they were doing that. So they can take a person and they can craft a crime that fits that person's life. Basically taking away the reliance of the alibi. 
You can't have an alibi anymore because they know, they already know. They already know everything you do, everywhere you go. They can craft a crime to fit your life so that you can't have an alibi. You can call that far-fetched, but why else would they be taking all of our information, right? So, Patriot Act, George Bush, what a great guy. And then we get to Obama with the NSA and uh, the upstream collection. That's what 17 called it, right? The upstream collection of all of this data. Whether they're looking at it or not, they're collecting all of this data on everybody in the country. This is a security state, right? And now we fast forward to today, where a few days ago, a couple patriots were tricked into breaching the Capitol absolutely tricked first of all the whole antifa thing give it a rest you guys these are clearly trump supporters maybe there was one or two provocateurs in there but no dude i would have been doing the same thing with these guys if i was there i would have been smashing stuff absolutely <laughs> so uh the people on the right saying that this is all antifa don't believe that you guys that's why i have a very hard time listening to the president anymore because the president set his followers up that's exactly what he did he said, let's go to Capitol Hill. And then everybody walks to Capitol Hill and the police wave them in. The police aren't even wearing helmets. With everything that has happened this year, you would think there would be hundreds, if not thousands, of police wearing helmets and riot gear. No, we had women police on the front line with no helmets, nothing. This was meant to happen. This was meant to happen. And now look at Google from today. Uh, Council on Even the Council on Foreign Relations is calling us domestic terrorists. This is one of the groups behind this agenda, this plan that I was just describing to you. Let's read a little. Oh, the CFR. Domestic terrorism strikes U.S. capital and democracy. So after 220 plus days of terrorism in Portland, Oregon, in Seattle, Washington, they didn't mention domestic terrorism once. Not with Kenosha, not with any of the... Literally 7% of our country was destroyed this year by Black Lives Matter and Antifa. And they didn't mention domestic terrorism once. But of course, they tricked the Patriots, and now the Patriots are the domestic terrorists. Because that is the plan, you guys. The plan is anti-white, anti-Christian, anti-liberty, anti-America. We are the targets. Black people are being used as a political pawn. We know that. Antifa is being used as a political pawn. Transgender people are being used as a political pawn. Gay people are being used as a political pawn. Hypochondriacs are being used as a political pawn. People who actually think this pandemic's real are being used as a political pawn. We are the target. Not just white people, but mostly white people. White, Christian, American patriots, liberty lovers, freedom lovers, people who are not racist, people who are not xenophobes, who are not homophobes, people who are actually kindred souls, wonderful souls. That is the target because we are the ones who are going to stop this plan. And we are the only ones who will stop this plan because we have been chosen to stop this plan. We are the target, and we need to stop this. Let's read a little bit from the CFR. The breaching of the U.S. Capitol and disruption of the presidential succession by a pro-Trump mob has inflicted lasting damage on the nation's image as a bastion of democracy. The country should now dedicate itself to rebuilding civil discourse. Build back better. It's just crazy. It's crazy. In a real world, I've been listening to Ryan Dawson a lot lately. He took a break for a long time, but I like him. He's consistent. You know, and he's saying that these people have all of this proof and all of this irregularities. We have it documented, but they won't look at it. They won't look at it. It's ridiculous. If you're so confident, just look at the evidence. But no, they won't. Yes, terrorism is determined by the act itself, not by the type of perpetrator or their cause. This is the U.S. government's approach. The FBI, the lead agency for countering terrorism, cites the definition of terrorism found in 18 U.S. Code 2331. Let's see what it says. Not reading that. I'll save it, though, so we can have it. So, yeah, guys, they've literally been burning our country down, and they haven't been called terrorist once. And we do one little thing. We break one little window. And we're a domestic terrorist. Even though they killed four people. They killed that girl. They, they pushed three other people off of like a 30 foot ledge. They forced them off with tear gas and stuff. The police killed American citizens. And Congress didn't even mention it. They rushed right back in. 
with thousands of people coughing their coof balls and spreading woo flu all over the Capitol, Congress went right back in because the most important thing to them was finishing that vote, was securing that vote. God forbid, imagine if that was a black person who was shot by Capitol Police. Imagine that. Imagine that. We'd still be hearing about it right now. But when it's a white person, they don't even mention it. That is racism. We are their enemy. We are the target. Crazy, dude. Absolutely crazy. So going back to Soldier of Fortune, you know, I just wanted to sort of paint this picture. This is since I've been alive, 1992, I've been alive to watch all of this happen. We used to walk around our neighborhood with realistic looking guns and fatigues. We used to play army looking like this. And our neighbors loved it. You know what I mean? We used to we used to dress up in fatigues for Memorial Day. And we used to go down to the cemetery and they used to let the kids stand next to the soldiers as they as they did the 21 gun salute. We would have camo. We would look just like this guy with our toy guns. Camo on our face, fatigues. And those seven noble soldiers would shoot those 21 rounds, and they would let the kids run over and pick up the shell casings. That's America. That's the America I grew up in. That's the America where you could pick up a magazine and travel across the world to be a mercenary. Because why? Because freedom. That's the America where if you didn't want the toll booth taking a picture of your license plate, you could pick up Soldier of Fortune and order that spray can out of the back. Because why not, right? The land of the free the home of the brave. It's all gone. It's almost all gone. And look where we're at today, you guys. The same people, the same people celebrated in our culture a couple decades ago, the warriors of our culture, right? Where are they at today? Right-wing terrorist. All right. Like I said, guys, please, please, please go to BitChute. Just open up your browser and leave tabs open. It's the exact same thing as using the YouTube app. We got to get off YouTube. Hopefully, this is my last YouTube episode ever. I hope they just get rid of it. Um, please come over to BitChute. I will put links in the description. And to all you new guys from BL Ranch, welcome. Like I said, BL's fine. He took it down himself. Um, God bless all of you. I know what's happening in the Pacific Northwest is a lot worse than the rest of the country, but... Um, we're right behind you here on the Pacific Northeast or the Atlantic Northeast. All right. God bless you guys. I will see you in the next episode. Bit shoot, bit shoot, bit shoot. Have a great day. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. But this is the year 1944. Much has happened since the Nazi triumphs of 1940-41. The United Nations have inflicted upon the Germans great defeat in open battle, man to man. Our air offensive has seriously reduced their strength in the air and their capacity to wage war on the ground. Our home fronts have given us an overwhelming superiority in weapons and munitions of war and placed at our disposal great reserves of trained fighting men. The tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking.